So the starting point was the fact that we were both involved in the Royal Fair. Yes. On the committee um, in, at least in the early 90s, I think. And the problem with the Royal Fair, and I think we'd already learned our lesson on this, is if it was really wet, we didn't make any money. And it was the Charlton Association and we were relatively short of funds. So I'd been to the Harbury Beer Festival, which is where the ticketing idea came from. And then I'm not sure who came up with the idea of going to the fleets of Repton. I think it was a pear tree yeah. based trip. Yes. And yes. um, quite his idea was. Yeah. I remember a very slow Mercedes minibus. Yeah, well, that was Ian driving, wasn't it? So, was it? I wasn't yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was Ian driving. Um, and there was you, myself, and Bob Murray. There was Steve Jackson and Penny, and I think John Henderson was with us as well. He was, yeah. yeah. And probably a few others. And I vaguely remember we got there a, a bit on the late side. We did, I think it was in full swing. Um, but then when we went, it was a warm evening, it had been a warm summer, and uh, we started sampling beers, and they were all not just room temperature, but warm. Mm. And I think we tried. A few and then sort of looked at each other and said, Well, I think we could possibly do this and do this better. So, yes, yes. And uh, so, so I don't think I, I can't, well, I can't remember that much of the latter half of the evening. So I think we probably did actually sample quite a lot of the beers. And then we all took trundled back to the village. And then yourself, Bob, and I got together probably the following week, I think, and we decided that we wanted to run with this idea, but we also decided that if we were going to do that, we couldn't really remain as part of the Royal Fair, Fair. because yeah. it was actually a much bigger um, enterprise and we'd sort of thought through. The next step must have been contacting brewers, obviously, the Horton Brewery. Yeah, I think we... Uh spoke to Steve and Wendy at the pear tree mm -hmm. and thought the garden would be an ideal location um, from a practical point of view but also uh, um, in an iconic venue if you like what people would to and then we decided to contact uh, a number of local brewers. Yeah, we got and we also then we decided we were going to go for 40 furkins that was the sort of size. I think we made this bizarre idea that that was all we could actually serve in the time we dedicated to it, which, um, considering the size of the festival now, was also a bit of an odd calculation that didn't really work out. And so we came up with the 40 Firkins idea, we came up with the, the tickets, which are actually the same design to this day. Um, we came up with, we had bespoke glasses as we well. We did, right. Yeah, yeah, because yes. you had to buy yeah. your glass, that was part of the system. And then um, Fred made the stillage for us out of old scaffolding. Um, and we made a toilet by digging a trench in the pantry yeah. garden, <laughs> which is quite a scary thought nowadays with the way these things go. And so that was all organised. We brought in a certain amount of beer through the wholesalers, didn't we? I think we had a good deal from one or two brewers that pay yeah. just the duty, and uh, one or two did us really good deals. And um, a few of them actually gave us the bit. Yeah. So we put in the seed funding of £500 each? I think so, yeah. So, so we had £1,500 to spend. And in the first year, we made a profit, once we've taken that £1,500 out again, of £1,400, I believe. Oh, that sounds right. Yeah. Um, and that was the, the only year we did any promotional work because we got. Um, Canberra, although it wasn't an official Canberra Beer Festival, Canberra did agree to promote it for us. So, and year one, we didn't actually sell out a beer on the night. We shut down at 11 o'clock, but we then sold off some beer in four pint jugs following morning. Sunday, yeah. I yeah. Think, like, Stephen Wendy Break, I agreed we could yeah. roll it to sell because I remember that um, we had quite a good Sunday lunch and people took lots of beer away. Yeah. So year one profit £1,400, year two profit on the same number of firkins £2,880. After that, things got a bit more brewing scale rather rapid. Uh, 
Yeah, I think. Um, Which year was it you ran out halfway through the afternoon? Was that year three or uh, four? I forget, but there have been some quite early yeah. run outs. Um, and one, we didn't overplay the charity aspect because we weren't sure whether we'd make any money to uh, give away to charities. But as it turned out, we made quite a bit. Um, and in year two, we then um, promoted the charitable aspect of it rather more, um, particularly leukemia research for a reason. Yeah, in uh, memory of my sister, no. who passed away in 86. So we thought there was already a best of isn't it? Yeah, and that's sort of been the Brewer's pet charity which she actually instigated uh, soon after she was diagnosed and it stayed as our charity. And I think ever since it's been the main beneficiary for the festival. Yes, it has. And uh, I can't really recall the figures because the numbers sort of get a little bit out of hand, but um, the, the, the festival itself went past the £200,000 donation mark quite a long time ago, so it's, I think it must be a long way beyond that and the current committee can probably fill us in on, on where we are overall financially. Yeah, one of the less glamorous jobs was sleeping with the beer on Friday night. Um, it's amazing how damp a marquee in a garden can be when you're trying to sleep in your sleeping bag. But the idea was to stop people coming and trying to sample the beer earlier than opening time. I don't think we ever got anyone attempting to do that on the Friday night, which always surprised me. But we did get somebody on the Saturday night of an early festival decided that they would take a firkin back to their campsite and finish it off for us. Which is all well and good, but they haven't obviously quite worked out the nature of cask cables. And I suspect they had an interesting uh, day on the Sunday <laughs> and drunk quite a quantity of, of beer and like lots of yeast. Yes, so, <laughs> yes, so that was uh, probably came with its own punishment that one, I think, possibly. I was working up on my page and there was smoke from the pear tree, um, which actually the shed was on fire. Yes, yeah, so that's when I lost my pewter tankard to the flames because I'd left it at the, uh, on the table where we sold the, the tickets and went. Uh, Somebody who I think was actually trying to keep warm from the embers of the pig roast had managed to sort of make contact between the embers of the pig roast and the wooden framing of the, the lean to shed at the back of the garage of the pear tree, which, with the benefit of hindsight, weren't terribly well spaced, were they? No, but I think a very quick attendance from the fire service, who were perhaps marginally slower that morning than normal. Um, but we had a new hose reel branch on the fire engine. It's very exciting, first time we'd used it, so we extinguished it very quickly. I do, I do remember actually several hours later, the fire guys still being there because they were worried it might flare up again. We very worried. So they were sat in the pear tree for several hours um, with liquid at hand just in case uh, something happened. But, uh, I'm not sure that was uh, for extinguishing things.